And now the celebration is on the track. I know that we have another race right after this, but do you guys feel it? Another championship? We feel it. It feels good to be on the home turf and bring yeah, one home for the, for the show. Woo! Your earrings are lightning bolts. Is that a little extra speed for you? Yeah, my mom gave them to me as a gift. So something special. Helen Gold, your last name is pretty close to the medal that you're about to receive <laughs> again. You go back to back in this event. Loka conference record, you go back to back in this event. You made it look a little easy out there coming down the final straight. How good did that feel? I felt really good. No, you crossed the line and it looked like you almost surprised yourself. What were you thinking? Um, well, I woke up and my legs are really, really tired and I didn't want to run. Guys, I've seen about one and a half of these races here today and uh, I'm already trying to make equations to other sports. So I'll say this, I, I equate this race to the Indy 500 where it's all about keeping your car clean for 499 miles and then you're ready to go for that 500th mile to make that push. That's kind of what we're seeing with these four leaders here. They're bunched up so close, but they're also kind of playing a little conservatively. You don't want to use up all the gas and you don't want to use up your tires and get caught up with someone else's feet and go down and, and put yourself at a deficit. So staying in the mix, staying right there, just like we saw Joe Minor Williams in the men's race, staying in the mix with Murga and Ben Olsen to have that final kick on the final home straight. Yeah, Nolan Fife, the distance coach for South Dakota, as Murga was coming around here into turn one, was really giving him a ton of encouragement, saying stay awake, stay ready, and get ready to go here in these final few laps. What a finish. 31 minutes of racing, and it comes down to just a couple of meters. What's going on in your mind as you're running down this final straight? Uh, like... Just trying to get the most points. And you kept your teammate in it, and uh, Murga Gamedo, what a run by him. Yeah. It's been a lot of you three yeah. in cross country and indoor and now in outdoor again. How familiar are you with those two guys, and uh, is the battle fun every time you're racing? Yeah, so I actually race Ben back in Minnesota. Allie Ryan, I know you're trying to catch your breath here, but congratulations. You're a Summit League champion. You go 422.09, career best in this event today. In the rain, difficult conditions, but you still go fast. How'd you do it? Oh, honestly, I was just going for the win. I wasn't trying to run fast. Seemed a little back and forth battle between you and Marlene. It's kind of been that way all season. Uh, two very talented pole vaulters, two of the tops in the country. How much does she push you to be better? I think Marlene pushes me a lot. Ben, congratulations, uh, a hard fought race. You two guys were going after it on that final straight. What did it take to edge this guy out there? He did a lot of the work up front, so I appreciate that for sure. And that hard work showed you improved by almost 10 meters off of last year's mark. The only one to go over 70 meters today. How good did that feel? I felt amazing. Um, it was a really fun atmosphere. Trevor, you go back to back in this event. How nice is it to do it here at home? It was great to do it at home. You let it rip. North Dakota State gets three out of the top four. A good start to the championship as you try to defend yet another title here. How important is this one? It was big, um, especially because we lost one of our hammer throwers. He uh, had an appendix rupture a couple days ago. What changed from last season to this season? Last year, you go 203, you come in second place here. This year, you get the win. Uh, how much work went in into this past off season? There was a lot of work, um, just like summer workouts through the summer, workouts just on a track. But I'd say the biggest thing was just we had new coaches coming last year. Like yeah, we were talking about the depth on the broadcast and kind of there were eight or nine guys that were really in the mix that could come out here and win this event. Uh, did that make it a little more difficult or was that easy on you? Uh, totally made it more difficult. I mean, just the mental game before is just kind of like, you know, I don't have that much room. Like 110 hurdle champion here in the Summit League. You win at the Drake Relays. You put up a big time today. A career best in the rain. How'd you do it? That's feels great raining night time. Why we got to help me out? Oh man, the emotion, Keenan. We're excited to hear this interview with Jake Levine. He's getting a lot of love from his teammates and coaches. Jacob, congratulations. 46-61. What did it take to uh, get that time out there? Uh, I was really trusting in my trainer. You win the heptathlon yesterday, and we already know how grueling that is. You competed in a couple more events. You qualified for the final here in the 400, and then you come out and you run a 53-9-3. How good did that feel? Uh, this one's extra special. I've Aaron, a conference record. You break the record that you broke yesterday. How did that happen? I have no clue. It's rainy. I didn't know what to expect. 
all you've done is win this year. You win the 60 and the 200 at indoors. You win the 100 today. This season has been pretty special, hasn't it? Yeah, just trying to keep the momentum rolling from indoor to outdoor and hopefully score some points for my team. <laughs> <laughs> Said he's going to need a few minutes. It is uh, such a difficult race, and you were able to sustain such a strong pace, so strong that you broke the conference record by about a second and a half. How good did that feel? That felt good. <laughs> just a testament to my teammates. Let's talk about your journey. I mean, you're from Fargo. You struggle in your first couple of seasons here to find what you're good at, and then today you're out here, two-time champion. How does this feel? Feels great, you know, coming in. Thought I was a jumper. Aaron, you win the 100 earlier, you win the 200 now, and you find three-tenths of a second off of yesterday's time. What was different out there today? Our team needed a point, so I just had to go out there and get it done. And you did it, and uh, now you've swept the sprints here at outdoors and at indoors, all the hard work that you talked about that you put in from last season to this season, do you really feel like it's paid off at this point? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Guys, I'm here with Trevor. You needed the big throw on the final throw. In the other events, you didn't need that, but you left it to the last one on this one. What was going on in your mind before you, sh you threw that? Not much. <laughs> the legacy of your family, the legacy of this bison throwing community, it's incredible, and you, you just finish it off with an incredible throw right there. How good does that feel? It feels great. Not to edge out my brother, the summer league might be a little bit down, but he never did get three titles in one meet, so 